Praise God, the family of God. Isn't God great? Praise God. Don't we serve a wonderful God tonight? Hallelujah. I'm glad to be in his house. I'm glad to be in his presence. Praise God tonight. Glory to God. In his presence is fullness of joy. Hallelujah. At his right hand are pleasures forevermore. It never gets old. Praise God. It never gets boring. There's always some new treasure to discover in God. Hallelujah. His word is just a, a, a treasure. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> oh, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost in the room tonight. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the anointing. I'm so glad for it tonight. Praise God. God bless you. If you would uh, grab your Bible and turn to the book of <clears throat> uh, Exodus with me. Exodus chapter 26. And we will begin at verse 31. Read down through verse 33. Amen. Amen. Praise God. It's good to see everyone out tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Good crowd in the house. Amen. Most importantly, God is in the house. Right. Praise God. Right. Hey, amen. Maybe you didn't come tonight expecting necessarily, but God has something special for somebody in this room tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, I believe that with all my heart. I just feel that with all my heart that Someone that's come in here tonight, maybe it's just been a drab day. Maybe we're, you know, we're human. We sometimes we're just putting in time. We're just trying to get the day in. And we come because we, we're supposed to come. And we're doing what we know we're supposed to do. Praise God. And that's, that's faithfulness. And God blesses us for that. But, but, but you didn't have any idea, oh, hallelujah, when you came in here tonight, what God was going to bless you with. Before you left this place, somebody here, God has a special something to put into your spirit, something to say to you. He's going to touch you in a special way. He's going to meet a need that you have longed to have met for a long time. Tonight, if you will be sensitive to the spirit of God, God will speak to your heart. And God will move in your very spirit, in the very depths of your being. Oh, hallelujah. And God is a difference maker. He's the difference maker tonight. Praise God. If you'll open up your spirit and your heart to him tonight, I promise you, God has a word for you. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Exodus chapter 26. <clears throat> Starting at verse 31. I don't know why I brought this here tonight, but put my message inside of it so it wouldn't get all wrinkly. That thing doesn't look too good, but, but it kept the message from getting wrinkly. And that's important to me. Praise God. I can't do the computer thing, so I got to keep my sheets all in some kind of order. Exodus 26, verse 31. And thou shalt make a, ve a veil of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twined linen of cunning work. With cherubims shall it be made. And thou shalt hang it upon four pillars of shittim wood overlaid with gold. Their hooks shall be of gold upon the four sockets of silver. And thou shalt hang up the veil under the tashes that thou mayest bring in thither within the veil, the ark of the testimony. And the veil shall divide unto you between the holy place and the most holy. Lord Jesus, we thank you, God, for your special touch tonight. And we thank you for your wonderful word tonight. Praise God. Lord, I feel your hand right now. God, your word is anointed. It's powerful. Lord, I pray, God, that you'll speak into our spirits, our hearts tonight, and have your way, God. Lord, we want to have fellowship with you tonight. Lord, we want to commune with you tonight. Lord, we want to be with you tonight. More importantly, God is the way you want to be with us. Oh, Lord. Why you created us, oh, God. Oh, hallelujah for fellowship, God. Lord, let us fellowship together tonight in this place. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The veil was the particular hanging which separated the most holy place from the sanctuary in the tabernacle. It was made of fine twined linen. The forms of the cherubim were embroidered upon it in colors of blue, purple, and scarlet. This hanging was not only gorgeous in beauty, but it was very strong. We are told that the force of two teams of oxen pulling in opposite directions could not 
tear it apart. The veil points directly to the humanity of the Lord Jesus. Praise God. In Hebrews 19, uh, 10 and 19 and 20, we read, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us. Say, he, he has done it. Praise God. He has done the work. It's all been by his hand. Praise God. And we messed up, but God said, I'm not going to leave it this way. I'll be back. I'm going to put it back together. It was my idea in the first place. I'm the one that made it so. I'm the one that created you for fellowship with me. It is my desire that you be in my presence. It is my desire that we have perfect fellowship together. So I won't leave it this way. And I see a couple bent over in the Garden of Eden. Curses being pronounced. It's what sin has done to mankind. A broken fellowship. But at the end of the curses, and at the, at the end of everything, a promise. A promise. I'll be back. You haven't seen the end. I'll be back. I've had a plan all along. Before the foundations of the world were ever laid, I had a plan. Praise God. I'll be back. I won't leave it this way. It's my desire for you, for me, to have fellowship together. Understand this tonight. Somebody in the room, God is not desiring to break fellowship with you. God is not desiring to put a veil between you and him for any reason because you're not good enough because you don't have pedigree. It's not because of pedigree whether good or bad tonight. It's not because of works whether good or bad but it's by the blood praise God that I'm made worthy that I can come before him. It's because of what he did. And he did what he did because God so loves us tonight. Oh, praise the Lord. Somebody praise the Lord tonight. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Having therefore, brethren, boldness. I didn't finish that. I didn't finish that scripture yet. <clears throat> to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us. That's where I get off. Through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. We are plainly told here that the flesh of Jesus was the real veil. Of which the veil of the holy place was only a symbol. First of all, the veil concealed the glory of God. Which shone between the cherubim. Just behind it dwelt the divine presence of the almighty God. From this fact we gather that the veil was a silent prophecy that someday God, who was spirit alone, would appear wrapped in a veil of flesh. Thank God tonight. Their invisible Jehovah was to come to earth in human form. Hallelujah. The Bible says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Praise God. It says that God was manifest in the flesh. That in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to Himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And He gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. Oh, I'm glad for it tonight. Praise God. I'm excited tonight. Hallelujah. I'm excited about this fellowship with God. I'm excited that I can get into his presence and I can speak with him and I can hear him talking to me. Hallelujah. The God, the creator of everything cares about me. Hallelujah. And there's no distance that he will not go to restore fellowship. Oh, praise God. To make it so that I can come into his presence. So I can be washed in the blood. So I can be sanctified. So I can be healed. So I can know him. Oh, hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Amen. No man could look upon God and live. 
And yet God wished to reveal himself to mankind. The only way our God, who is a consuming fire, could approach sinful man and reconcile him to himself was to hide behind a veil of flesh. Verily thou art a God that hidest thyself, O God of Israel, the Savior. The glory of God dwelling behind the veil of the tabernacle is one of the clearest Bible illustrations of the truth of the incarnation. In the scene of the transfiguration, the glory of Jehovah was shown to be dwelling behind the veil of the flesh of Jesus. There on Mount Hermon, in the darkness of night, a light shone which did not come from the moon or the stars. And yet it filled the place as the sun would have done at midday. A ray of this light, which had continually dwelt behind the veil, now proceeded out of the very flesh of Christ, making his garments, as the scripture says, as white as no fuller or no process on earth can white them. The fact that the veil representing his flesh was made of white linen showed that his humanity was to be sinless. And yet a mere attempt to imitate this purity could not bring salvation for the unrent veil shut the people out of the presence of God. It was the rent veil which opened the way to the holiest place. Hallelujah. There is a truth here which overcomes the modernistic teaching of saving oneself by trying to display the same virtues which Jesus showed forth. Supposing the high priest should stand before the veil, admiring the spotlessness of the linen and the exquisite workmanship of the embroidery, he would still have to admit however beautiful it was that it was a barrier between him and God's presence. Likewise, Man may admire the virtues of the humanity of Christ, but while he is doing it, he will have to admit that he falls far short of his perfection. For all of us have sinned. All and every one of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Try as he will, the unregenerated man is as different from the Christ as the darkness It differs from the light today. The only way the high priest could enter the most holy place even on the day of atonement, was with the blood from off the altar of sacrifice. And likewise, the blood, the blood of Jesus, allows us to enter into his presence today. Oh, thank God for the blood. Oh, thank God for the blood that washes white as snow. It's not by my works. Uh, Either way, I can't do enough wrong that it can keep me out of the presence of God. I can't do enough right that would make me worthy of the presence of God. It has nothing to do with that. It all has to do with the blood. It all has to do with the sacrifice. Oh, hallelujah. And so the unrent veil was a barrier shutting man out of the presence of God. Just as the sinlessness of Christ alone only showed what a great contrast there was between a holy God and a sinful man. We are not able to approach God merely because Christ lived a sin... Did you see that? I tried to wipe... I tried to wipe the sweat out of my eyes. I I forget that I have glasses on. Praise God. So then I smudge my glasses and then I can't see... All right, praise God. Let's get back on track. (laughs) Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, it's so good to be in God's presence. Oh, hallelujah. Don't take it for granted tonight. Don't ever take it for granted when you come into God's presence. Don't ever take that for granted. Hallelujah. There was a time we couldn't do this. There was a time men longed for this and would have given anything to trade places with you today. Here we are, beyond the veil, hallelujah, in the presence of Jehovah, oh God Almighty, hallelujah, Prince of Peace. I'm so glad to know him tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, praise God. We are not able to approach God merely because Christ lived a sinless and beautiful earthly life. Our approach to the Shekinah, is made possible because this veil of his flesh was rent. 
as was the veil in the temple. The account in Matthew tells us Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to bottom. The flesh of Jesus was rent when he died on the cross of Calvary. Since the veil was so strong that the oxen could not tear it apart, and since the rending was from the top to the bottom, the fact is established that this event took place by the hand of God himself. Oh, hallelujah. You believe that tonight? Praise the Lord. How plain this type is made when we see that at the same moment that Jesus died, at the very same moment an unseen hand rent the veil of the temple. Oh, let's get a picture of it tonight. It was 3 o'clock in the afternoon, according to Scripture, the hour of the evening sacrifice. The priest was sacrificing the Passover lamb upon the brazen altar in the temple, oblivious, oblivious to what was happening at Mount Calvary. At the very same hour, Jesus, the true Passover lamb, hallelujah, was being sacrificed on the brazen altar of the cross of Calvary. And there was an anxious stirring from behind the veil. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us tonight. At the moment Jesus cried, it is finished and yielded up the ghost. The veil in the temple was rent in twain. And out came mercy. And out came grace. Oh, hallelujah. How long he had desired to come out from behind the curtain. Amen. Amen. Oh, rakama I can just see. I can just see. Oh, he just tears that veil apart. God excited. It's time that has come. The time has come for fellowship to be restored. Thank you. I like that. Praise God. And here he comes running. Like the song said, mercy came running out from behind the veil. Hallelujah. You think that we were excited. You think that we were looking forward to that day. You could not know how much God looked forward to that day. Oh, the plan was set in place even before the foundations of the world were laid. The foundations of the world. The plan was already in place. God knew it. He knew exactly what he would do. He knew exactly what would happen. He had it all under control. Hallelujah. And when the day finally came, out he came. Praise God. Victorious. Oh, thank God. It wasn't it wasn't because I'm so special, I assure you that. Oh, maybe it was. I guess I'm so special to him. Praise God. Yes, hallelujah. And at the moment he cried, it is finished. Amen. The veil in the temple was rent in twain, changing the veil from a barrier to a new and living way into the presence of God. Ah, the sinlessness of the humanity of Christ showed how unfit man was for heaven, while the sacrifice of his humanity made a way for man to enjoy the presence of God. Ah, what is it tonight that would keep you from coming? What is it tonight that would hold you out from his presence? What is it that would hold you back from fellowship with God? What is it tonight? What is it? Is it a feeling? Is it something that goes way back? Is it, is it uh, uh, something that you have against God tonight? Is it maybe that you don't feel worthy tonight? Is it, is it that you don't feel like you're good enough? Is it some sin of any kind? What is it tonight that would hold you back? What is it that would keep you from His presence? Uh, amen. What is it that would keep you tonight? It's all a lie. It's all a lie. It's all a lie. We can boldly come before the presence and the throne of God tonight, not because of what we have done, but all oh, because of what He has done. Oh, what a great God we serve. Oh, He has made a way for us where there was no way, where sin had torn us apart and ruined us. God came and He paid the price of sin and He restored us. That is a loving God. That is a loving God tonight. Oh, if you could only understand 
I can't. How much he loves you. If you could only understand how much he desires to walk with you. And to talk with you. And to commune and fellowship with you. He's calling you tonight. He calls you every night. He calls you in the morning. He calls you at the noon time. He calls you in the evening. Come, have fellowship with me. Come and walk with me. I've made a way for us. You don't have to stand back in fear. You don't have to be shy. You can come before me. You are my child. I have bought you with a price. I have bought you with my blood. And I want you to come. I want you to come. Understand. I want you to come. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I hope you're understanding. Amen. What the word of God is saying tonight. I hope you understand this. God is not just some judge out there ready to strike us down when we do wrong. God is the one that made us and made a way for us when we went wrong. He always makes a way. He always makes a way. He always does good for us. He always does the right thing. He's always working in our favor. He's always on my side. Hallelujah. Even when I don't deserve it, He's faithful and He's on my side. And He's calling to me. Don't bow down. Don't walk away. Don't hide yourself. You don't have to hide yourself from me. Ah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hadabokata. God is so good. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, hadabokushandai. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. God is speaking to someone tonight. God is tugging on your heartstrings tonight. Shandoriakabahotaya. God is calling you tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. When the high priest took the blood into the holiest place on the day of atonement, he was not allowed to sit down or to remain in that sacred room. As soon as his ceremony was finished, he had to withdraw. This showed that the sacrifice was not complete and could perfect no one. But notice that when Jesus, the antitypical high priest, entered with his own blood, the real holy place, which is now heaven, Amen. He sat down at the right hand of God, showing that the sacrifice was now complete. This man, the scripture says, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever. Oh, hallelujah. Forever. Hallelujah. Sat down on the right hand of God. This offering perfected forever them that are sanctified. Since we have such a high priest whose own flesh was rent for us, we can now draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith and obtain mercy. And obtain mercy. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. Obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> so many years, so many lambs were offered up. 
Yet all the blood that was shed could never fill that bitter cup. Till one spotless lamb in the form of man gave his life on Calvary. This was the only blood that could ever set me free. Oh, hallelujah. I'm so glad his precious blood still flows tonight from Calvary. Stand with me tonight. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. In light of what God has done, I think it would be appropriate for us tonight to take some time and enter in. Oh, come on, somebody. Forget about your past. Forget about your failures. Forget about the day. <laughs> Forget about the opinions of others. Saint and sinner alike, we can all come. We can all come. God has made a way. God has made a way. Yes, just as he said he would. Just as he promised he would. Fellowship has been restored. For some of us, God is a stranger. God is just someone we read about in this book. God is someone we hear about. God does not want to be a stranger to you. I said, God does not want to be a stranger to you. Throw aside everything that stands between you and Him. The veil has been rent. He has done His part. Anything now that stands between you and God is what you have placed between you and Him. Because He tore everything else away. He's anxious to get at you. <laughs> I think of my little grandson. And sometimes I get home from a long day's work or I've been gone a couple of days, maybe on vacation, and I just want to get at him. I just want to oh, pinch his little cheeks and I want to get his on the forehead and I want to play with him. I just want to get at him. That's how God feels towards us. Oh, oh, oh if you would only take time. Oh, if you would only come close and draw near, come into my presence and know me. Oh, oh, the stuff that I have for you. Oh, the treasure. Oh, the glory. Oh, oh where the places I could take you. I could show you stars you've never seen before. I could take you higher than you've ever been. I could show you things you'd, that you never imagined. We could have fellowship together to such a point that you would never want to leave my presence that you would never want to get out of my presence that you would desire to live there every moment of every day that's how good it gets what is it that would stop you from coming what is it that would stop you from coming the veil has been rent Since it's open to the whole wide world. Here I am. I'm your savior. I'm your healer. I'm the one that picks you up when you fall down. I'm the one that carries you when you can't go any further. I'm the one that loves you when nobody else loves you. I'm the one that never, never turns his back on you. Even when you curse my name, even when you shake your fist toward heaven, I never turn my back on you. I never forsake you. I never have, I never will. Come and have fellowship with me. Come and know me. Let it change your life. Let it change your existence. Let me make a difference in your mundane life. There is a higher way. There is always a higher and a better way in me. Oh, praise God. 
Can we just close our eyes tonight? Can we close our eyes? Can we just not concentrate on anything tonight except the presence of God with these few moments we have left? Would you let the Lord speak to you? Enough of me talking. I, I've been talking too much. Why don't you let the Lord speak to you right now? But He has something to tell you. It's like when that someone reaches over and they can hardly wait to whisper a secret into your ear. God, God has pulled himself up to you, next to you. And he says, I have, a, I have something special to say to you. I have a special promise for you tonight. I have a revelation for you tonight. I have a special word from me to you. It's personal. It's not for everyone else to hear. It's between me and you. Come with me, let's fellowship together. Oh, like we used to. Come back to your first love. Let's walk together. Let's know one another. <laughs>